These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. Here you are, the Eggheads. Here we are. Here we are. Now, if you'd like to work on a question from the Eggheads while you watch at home, Chris, you've got one. What village in Scotland takes its name from that of a 15th century Dutchman? Find out the answer from Chris at the end of the show. Now, hoping to beat the might of the Eggheads today are Arch Stanton from North Yorkshire. This team often quiz together at the Joiners Arms in Hampstwaite and take their team name from a classic spaghetti western. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm John. I'm a retired gas engineer. Hello, I'm Terry. I'm an operating department practitioner. Hi, I'm Chris and I'm a retired social worker. Hi, I'm John. I'm a painter and decorator. Hi, I'm Elliot. I'm a genealogist. So, John and team, hello. 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 Great to see you. So, tell us about the origin of the name, John. Well, it's from the Spaghetti Western, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. And uh, it's a character in that from uh, the end of the film. And me and Terry in particular are great uh, fans of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Lee Van Cleef and all that. Yeah, yes. Lee Van Cleef, yes. Clint Eastwood. Yeah. And uh, it's, we just thought it was a, a real good name. It's a great, and it's on the grave at the end. It's on the grave at the end, like, yeah, that's where the... the uh, all the money's supposed to be buried, but it's not buried there. And if anybody hasn't seen the movie, I won't uh, spoil the ending for them. No, so you quiz together and your friends? Yeah, yeah we've uh, most of us have played sport together over the years, uh, football, tennis, uh, badminton, and uh, we all quiz together. And the Joiner's Arms is, uh, is the key It's uh, one of our it. local pubs that we go to, yeah. Will they all be watching there? Uh, hopefully, yeah, yeah. OK, here you go. Good luck. <laughs> Thank Every you. day there is a thousand pounds worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. However, if they fail to defeat the Eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, Arch Stanton, the Eggheads have won the last four. They're getting into their stride here. So there's five thousand pounds for you to win today. Would you like to try? We certainly would. Yeah. Excellent. The first head-to-head -head battle is on sport. Who would like this? Right. I think that would be me. I think that'll be uh, Elliot. Yeah. Yeah. Elliot going for that. Yeah. Elliot down the end, genealogist. And which egghead would you like? Which one it doesn't look genial. Judith, I think. Judith on the spot. Yeah. 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 You all agree? Yeah. Judith, please. Mm. Okay. I'm not looking at all genial. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So Elliot from Arch Stanton versus Judith from the Eggheads on sport. And let's get started. Please go to the question room. Well, good luck here, Elliot. And you are a genealogist. Yes, I research people's family histories. So if someone could bring you up and say, can you find out about my father, grandmother, whatever, and you'd do it. Yes, and I try to uncover various uh, skeletons in the closet. How amazing! Do you, do you find good stuff out? Yes, I've, I've found a few in my own family. Uh, one relative was sent to Bermuda for 10 years for stealing a cow, and uh, another, a cutler from Sheffield, was sent to Van Diemen's Land for seven years for stealing 24 knives. You'd think he had enough knives. Goodness me, stealing a cow, that's amazing, Judith, being sent to Bermuda as a punishment. Well, yeah, nowadays it wouldn't be a punishment, would it? Yeah, the opposite. Would be thrilled to bits, Miss Yeah. The Muda. All right, so genealogist versus are Judith and Elliot. You can choose whether you go first or second on sport. I'd like to open the batting and go first, please. And here's your first question, Elliot. The cricketer Javed Miandad played 124 test matches for which team? Pakistan, England, or Australia? I'm. Fairly confident that was Pakistan. Pakistan is correct. Judith, which of these tennis players is the tallest? Andre Agassi, Michael Chang, or Boris Becker? Oh, my goodness me. Um, I don't think Andre Agassi is very tall. I don't think Michael Chang is very tall. I think it's Boris Becker. It is Boris Becker. Well done. Back to you, Elliot. Which of these Irish rugby union players is best known for playing as a fly half? Brian O'Driscoll, Paul O'Connell, or Jonathan Sexton? I'm not sure on this one. Um, it could be Jonathan Sexton, I'll go for that. You've got it right. Jonathan Sexton it is. <laughs> well done, relief. Thank okay, you, Judith. Here we are on our beloved sport. Which Premier League football team purchased Benjamin Mendy? for £52 million in July 2017, Arsenal, 
Manchester City or Liverpool? 52 million? Yeah. What's he called? Benjamin Mendy, M-E-N-D-Y. A club with a huge amount of money to spend. I think that might be Manchester City. Manchester City's right. Well done. 2-2. Two, two. In which year, Elliot, did the golfer Bobby Jones first win the British Open? 1916, 1926, or 1936? Mm, golf isn't really my strong point. Uh, I think I'll go straight down the middle, 1926. If you're guessing, you're guessing really well. 1926 is correct. So you got three out of three. Judith, back to you, see if you can catch up. The British quartet that famously defeated the USA in the final of the men's 4x400 relay at the 1991 Athletics World Championships were Roger Black, Derek Redmond, Chris Akabusi, and which other runner? Jamie Bolsh, Ewan Thomas, or John Regis? <laughs> it's not my old friend Ewan Thomas, is it? Um, I, I don't know, Jeremy. Jamie Bolsh. Well, it would be painful if it was you and Thomas, wouldn't it? Because you've got a little bit of history with you. He is my friend. I know he's one of your favourite sportsmen. It's not Ewan, but it's also not Jamie. Oh. The answer is John Regis. Well done, Elliot. You've taken the round. With your three correct questions against Judith too, you will be in the final round. Please return to us, both of you, and we'll play round two. So, as it stands, Arch Stanton have not lost any brains from the final round. The Eckets have lost one. And the next subject for you is film and TV. Who would like this? You want to see me? Sorry. Terry, you're going to go, yeah? I'll go. I'll give it Okay, Terry's going to go. Terry, and which AK? Can't be Judith, of course. Okay. Yeah, go for Pat. Go for Pat. Very good, Terry from Arch Stanton, playing Pat. You haven't been out for a while, have you? Not for a long time. Not for a long time. To ensure there's no conferring, please. Take your positions. Well, good luck in this round, Terry. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And you work in the health service? I do. In operating theatres? An operating department practitioner. Meaning that you are scrubbing up and you're getting the, the scalpel and all that? Uh, well, not quite so, but we do scrub up, but uh, yes, and look at, looking after the welfare of the patients and also the equipment in and around the theatre suite. And I know you're very sporty, play tennis, badminton, five-a-side football and all of that. Yes. Yes. And how is your fitness on film and TV? Um, I'm hoping it's as good as my tennis, but I don't know about the badminton. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see then, Terry, up against our Pat, and would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go first, Jeremy. So here we go. Colin Firth won a Best Actor Oscar for his performance in which film? The King's Speech, Love Actually, or Mamma Mia? Colin Firth. Uh... I think it's the King's Speech. Brilliant, it is, yeah, the King's Speech. Okay, your question. Pat, which actor was born Ramon Estevez in 1940? John Wayne, Martin Sheen, or Kevin Spacey? Well, this man has a son uh, called Emilio Estevez, and a son called Charlie Sheen, it's Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen is quite right. Okay. Your question, Terry. Who plays Lance in The Detectorists, the TV comedy written and directed by Mackenzie Crook? Toby Jones, Matt Berry, or Vic Reeves? I think, Jeremy, that I think it's Toby Jones. Toby Jones is the right answer. Well done. Thank you. Great comedy. Two to our challenger. Let's see if Pat can catch up. Which Oscar-winning 2014 film did Damien Chazelle direct before La La Land? Interstellar, Nightcrawler, or Whiplash? He's a very young man. He was extremely young when he won his Oscar, but I think his breakthrough was about an aspiring jazz drummer played by Miles Teller in Whiplash. Whiplash is correct. Back to our challenger. No one's made a mistake so far. China Girl is the subtitle to the second series of which TV drama series? The Missing, Top of the Lake, or Happy Valley? I think that's Top of the Lake. Top of the Lake is correct. Really good play, Terry. Thank you. Three to our challenger now. Pat, who directed the 1999 sitcom Spaced, starring Simon Pegg and Nick Frost? Was it Edgar Wright, Guy Ritchie, or Matthew Vaughan? Could possibly be any of them. Um, in general terms, I sort of link Edgar Wright to Simon Pegg. 
Uh, Edgar Wright did his um, Cornetto trilogy of films and Simon Pegg popped up in Hot Fuzz. So maybe there's a link there. I'm not sure about this, uh, but my feeling is it might be Edgar Wright. Okay, let's check with the eggheads here. Eggs? Don't oh, thank right. you. They like that as well. Edgar Wright is correct. So, after three questions each, the scores are level. We go to sudden death just to make it that bit harder, Terry. The questions are not multiple choice. Here we go. In which decade was the daytime TV show This Morning first broadcast? I'd say the 1980s. Yes, you're right. It was 88. 1980s. Hat. Liam Neeson has starred in how many Taken films? Oh dear, dear, dear. He's been threatening terrorists down the phone repeatedly. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to be sort of guessing the answer to this one. Has he done three or has he done four? I think I'll go for three. Three is correct. Terry, back to you. Sudden death. Which English director has won Cannes Palm d'Or Award twice since 2000? Is it uh, Ken Lodge? It is for The Wind That Shakes the Barley and for I, Daniel Blake. Well done. Ken Loach. Pat, so stay in. Which two actors starred in the films Pulp Fiction, Unbreakable and Die Hard with a Vengeance? Well, Bruce and Samuel L. Jackson are definitely in Pulp Fiction with major, major roles. Samuel L. Jackson is definitely Unbreakable and Bruce is definitely in Die Hard with a Vengeance. Are there any other people who could, who could ruin my day here? Um, no, I think I'll go for Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson. You're quite right. Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson. All right, Terry, see if you can shake him off. Danny Bear, Katie Puckrick, Amanda DeCadene, and Hufty were among the female presenters of which late night show of the 1990s? I'll just have a guess on this, Jeremy, because I don't think I've got a clue. I think After Dark. No, it was The Word. Not The Word. Yeah. Is that with Terry Christian, eggheads? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so he yeah. was the obvious yeah. sort of mm. other person. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Pat has a chance to take the round. Which 1955 Alfred Hitchcock film, Pat, is set on the French Riviera? Hmm. Well, the one came into my head, which was to catch a thief, but I'm going to have to do a little bit more due diligence on this and see whether it... Would it be anything else? Hitchcock, 55. He was very prolific. I think to catch a thief is Hitchcock, and I think it's got a Riviera setting. I think I'll have to go with that, to catch a thief. If you've got this right, you're in the final, Pat. The answer is to catch a thief. Well done, Pat. But very well played, Terry, as well. Excellent. Right till the very end there. I'm afraid you've been beaten by RAK and you've been knocked out. Come back to us, and we'll see what happens next. It was a great play by Art Stanton, but they've lost a brain from the final round. The Eckheads have also lost a brain, so very level so far. And we now have science for you, gentlemen. Who wants this? That's going to be you, Chris, or Jeremy. You? You want to take that, Chris? Yeah. Looks like me, Jeremy. Okay, Chris, retired social worker against which Egghead? And obviously it can't be Pat or Judith. Lisa. Lisa, yeah, go for Lisa. Yeah. Uh, Lisa. Lisa, I think. Right, Chris from Arch Stanton taking on R.A.K. Lisa, and please now go to the question room. Okay, good luck, Chris. We're on science here. You were chosen for it, or you chose yourself, or how did it work? Uh, press gun. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got more of a science background than your teammates, I guess, or something like. Oh, you're just interested, maybe. No, I, I was. I was. It's a short straw, Jeremy. Believe me, the okay. short straw. <laughs> So here we go with science. Would you like to go first or second, Chris? Um, could I go first, Jeremy, please? You can, and here we go. Which of these ligaments is found in the human leg? Is it the radiocarpal, cruciate, or periodontal? I'm going to base this on football injuries, Jeremy, and I, I know footballers get cruciate ligament problems, so I'm going to guess it's probably the cruciate. And you've been coaching for 25 years, I gather? I have. Cruciate is correct. Well done. Yes. Lisa, your question. What is the approximate life expectancy of a male lion living in the wild? 12 years, 32 years, or 52 years? I think they'd be going some to get to 32, but 
I don't know. I mean, I, I think 32 seems a lot for, for any wild animal, and I think 52 is just getting beyond the bounds of possibility for any largish mammal of that sort. So, straight fight between 12 and 32. I'll go for 12 years. And 12 is right. Well done. 12 years. Chris, which of these scientists was born first? Alfred Nobel, Niels Bohr, or Sigmund Freud? Hmm. All reasonably close together, I think. Um, really don't know. I'm going to take a guess on Sigmund Freud. Now, let's see if we can do some dates with these eggheads. Do, do we know any birthdays, Pat? Well, we know that the Nobel Prizes were were created in the will of Alfred Nobel. And right. the first Nobel Prize was 1901. So he was, he was gone by then. And Sigmund Freud came to London around the time of the Second World War and died sometime afterwards. Okay. And Niels Bohr is the son of a Nobel Prize winner. So ah. of those, Alfred Nobel must be considerably ahead of them all. Yeah. It's, it's Alfred Nobel, Chris. Going through them, Nobel, 1833, Bohr, 1885, and Freud, 1856. Those are the birth years. Lisa, we go over to you. See if you can take advantage. Which mathematician was awarded the 2017 Copley Medal for his work on Fermat's Last Theorem. John Nash, Andrew Wiles, or Peter Higgs? I feel bad. These men are absolute superstars in their field and I know so little about any of them. Um, I'm going to put John Nash to one side and I kind of wouldn't have thought it would be Peter Higgs either. Because he's not, not so much of a kind of a pure th theoretical mathematician. Um, I'll go for Andrew Wiles. I'm glad you do, because otherwise if Barry was here, he would be climbing the walls. That's basically our roles. I say things and Barry cries. <laughs> well, he's not here. Andrew Wiles is the right answer. Any any kids gave us some more on Andrew Wiles? Well, he um, he spent, I think, about seven years in private search for the... For the he was using modern mathematical methods to prove the last theorem. And he published a proof. And it turned out there was a, a flaw. Uh, there was a big kerfuffle and he went back into his researches and he kept battling away with a colleague and several years later they triumphantly cleaned everything up in a moment of revelation and everybody accepted you yeah, you've done it it was a, a tremendous achievement and and Fermat's last theorem is to do with it's, what it states that uh, for an integer greater than two there is no solution to the equation x cubed equals y cubed plus z cubed Right. Fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll get Andrew Wiles in on a celebrity egg And Judith, Judith, you can you beat him on science. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you will as well. The question about botany. Right, OK. We move on. Back to Chris. So it's it's a little bit of a, an emergency here. Chris, you've got to get this right. Mm. Which of these tests is used to assess colour blindness? Is it Apgar, Rorschach or Ishihara? Hmm. I really don't know, Jumbi, but I'm going to have to... Something in the back of my mind thinks that it might be Rorschach. Rorschach is, is like they just make a random splodge on a page and you're supposed uh, to say what it is and it's a clue as to your, you know, internal whatever. Um, it's Ishihara okay. is the answer for colour blindness. Mm. And Lisa will be in the final round. And sorry, Chris, you've been knocked out. Not too late for our challenges, though. One more round before the final. Please come back to us, both of you. So, as it stands, Arch Stanton have lost two brains from the final round. The Eggheads have lost one, and the next subject is geography. Now, I think we've got two Johns left. Yes, we have. And you've got John, John B yeah. as well. Yeah. So, um, it's John. John geography. It's you, yeah, OK? We, we, it's John who's, <laughs> okay. who's not the team captain. Yeah. All right. So, John who's not the team captain against which Egghead? And you can have, let's see, we've got Steve and Chris left. Steve Chris. 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 Steve. Yeah, cool. I'll go for the new guy. I'll go for the new, new one. Steve. 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 Very good. Okay. John B. from Arch Stanton versus Steve from the Eggheads. You up for this? I'm up for it. Excellent. Please go to the question room for the last time. So what do you do for a living, John? I'm a pension decorator, Jeremy. Yeah. Oh, great. So tell us what kind of jobs you enjoy most. I like uh, wallpapering, yes. Especially. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that is such an art. Because to... if you hang it, Assuming that the, the ceiling and the floor are parallel, it's fatal, isn't it? Oh, yeah, you've got to be careful, yeah, yeah. Okay, John, 
Good luck here. Okay, you're up against Steve. Let's see if you can just even it up for the challengers. And would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go first, Jeremy. So geography is the round, and here's your question, John. Which of these countries is bordered by the South China Sea? Myanmar, Vietnam, or Bangladesh? Well, I don't think it's Bangladesh. It's a choice of the other two. I think it's Vietnam. I'll go down the middle. Brilliant, John. Well done. Vietnam is right. Good quizzing. Okay, Steve, your question. Which of these Italian cities is located on the coast? Naples, Florence, or Milan? Yeah, I think that's got to be Naples, Jeremy. It is indeed Naples, yeah. I've been there and I could see the sea. John, Oakham is the administrative centre of which historic county? Devon, Rutland or Worcestershire? Can you spell Oakham? Uh, yes, I'm so sorry. O-A-K-H-A-M. Well, when you said historic county, uh, Rutland comes to mind, so I'll go for Rutland. Very good again. Rutland is right. Okay. Steve, your question. What colours feature on the Lithuanian flag? Red, white and blue, black, red and yellow, or yellow, green and red? It's yellow, green, red, Jeremy. Oh, you're good with your flags. You sit around learning them, or what? I've had to. Yellow, green and red is correct. OK, John, your question. Maseru is the capital of which African country? Lesotho, Togo, or Guinea-Bissau? Maseru. I'm not sure this one, Jeremy. I'll go Guinea-Bissau. I have been there, and it's not Guinea-Bissau, it's in Lesotho, inside South Africa, basically. Lesotho is the answer, which gives Steve a way in to the final round with this question. Which of America's eight Ivy League universities is located in Rhode Island? Brown, Cornell, or Dartmouth? That's Brown, Jeremy. Oh, you've got no doubt at all about that? No. Brown is the right answer. Well done, Steve. Sorry, John. They, they're very fast sometimes, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, he's very good on that subject. His flags <laughs> and his Ivy League universities. Well done, Steve. You're in the final round. Please come back to us and we'll play that final for £5,000. So this is what we have been playing towards. It is time for our final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So... Terry, Chris and John from Arch Stanton, but also Judith from the Airkins. Would you please now leave the studio? John and Elliot, you're playing to win Arch Stanton, £5,000. Lisa, Steve, Chris and Pat, you're playing for something even more precious, the Airkins reputation. As usual, I'll ask each team three questions in turn. This time they're all general knowledge. You can confer. So, John and Elliot, the question is, can your two brains defeat these four in a famous victory? And would you like to go first or second? We'll go first, gentlemen, please. Okay, John, Elliot, good luck. Your first question. Which of these foods consists of baked or fried pastry stuffed with meat, cheese, vegetable or fruit? Is it empanada, croquette or paella? You want that one? Uh, I think paella is Spanish, isn't yeah. it? I don't think it's a croquette, because that's no. kind of... Potatoes and stuff, isn't it? Empanada. Empanada. Yeah, could be. Zinc. Uh, I don't know what paella is. No. Empanada. We'll go empanada, gentlemen. Empanada's the right answer. Well done. Always good to get the first one right. Please. So, over to our eggheads we go. How old is William Shakespeare believed to have been at the time of his death? 22. 52 or 92? 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. Hey kids, which star sign falls before Cancer and after Taurus in the calendar? Gemini, Virgo, or Aquarius? Gemini. Yeah. All day long. Virgo's often the Yeah, Gemini's often. Well, you and me are Leo's, we know. That's Gemini. Gemini is the right answer. Well done. 
Oh, I'm feeling the tension. We've got 5,000 pounds we're playing for here. Just get one more right, and maybe, maybe, maybe. Your third question. Which of these US presidents died in office? Benjamin Harrison, Zachary Taylor, or James Monroe? So, the presidents who died in office. Yeah. I think that was um, Harding, Taylor. I'm not feeling too much, but obviously, what do you do? Ah, uh, I'm not I think there was a Taylor or a Tyler that died in office, but it might be Tyler, I might be getting mixed up. I might be getting Harrison mixed up with another one. Yeah. Do you think it's Benjamin Harrison and well? I'm not feeling it's. Uh, Benjamin Harrison. Okay, go for that then. We'll go for Benjamin Harrison, gentlemen. Benjamin Harrison is your answer. And you had Elliot, were you saying... Oh, there was a Taylor or a Tyler who died in you had a Harrison as well. Yeah, no, I, you? And I, uh, I think that it was William Henry Harrison who died in office. And... It's very interesting, you've got, I mean, let's just see, who died in office? Can you list them, eh, kids? Well, William Henry Harrison. Ha-ha! Gave, gave an enormous inauguration speech on a cold, wet day and got pneumonia. Okay, yes. I think I think it was William Henry Harrison, Warren yes. Harding, Franklin D. Roosevelt and Zachary Taylor. And yes, Zachary Taylor is there, but gosh, you were so close to that, Ali. You were actually sort of conjured with it. Yeah. So, Zachary Taylor, this gives the AKs the chance to take the contest. Here is your question. In John le Carre's book, what is the name of the spy who came in from the cold? Is it Carl Hamilton, Alec Lemus, or John Drake? Alec Lemus. Yeah. 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 Like John Richard Dyer in the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When asked what he believed, said, I believe a number in open bus, I'll take you to Hammersmith. It's uh, Alec Lemus. Alec Lemus is the right answer. We say congratulations, Eggheads. You have won. <laughs> Commiserations, Arch Stanton. And what, Elliot, that was. Yeah. You were so close with that. I knew it wasn't quite right. And, I just and you had, put you my you had the William it. Henry in your mind. So you were interested in American presidents then? Yeah, or? I've done a bit of research into that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, the Eggheads have done it again, and their winning streak continues. They reign supreme. It does mean the challengers don't go home with the £5,000, so the money rolls over to our next show. Eggheads, well done. Who will beat you, I wonder? Oh, before we go, Chris, you had a question? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Yes, I asked you uh, what Scottish village takes its name from a 15th century Dutchman. And I'm, when you say Dutchman, I'm thinking Rembrandt and Van Dyck and Van Eyck and all of that. Oh, the guy from the Netherlands, yeah. So, who is it? Well, it's John de Groot, which takes its name from Jan de Groot, who settled in what's now Caithness in the late 15th century and run a ferry service across the Pentland Firth to the Orkneys. Right. Never knew that. Thank you, Chris. Hope you got that at home. Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains that defeat the A-Kids. £6,000 says they don't. Till then, goodbye.